Did the James Webb Space Telescope actually find signs of life on the exoplanet K218b? Turns out maybe not. Everybody much adventure back again with another video. Today we are talking about what just happened in the news. I don't know if you've seen a couple days ago, but apparently the James Webb Space Telescope has found life, signs of life on the, uh, I'd say this at this point, it's the most famous exoplanet, uh, the Super Earth K218b. This bad boy. It's found life. Um, but now scientists are... This was the article a couple days ago. But now scientists are saying that, you know, maybe they're not so sure. So maybe this didn't happen. So let's uh, let's talk about this. Let's find out exactly uh, what they found and, you know, why they thought it was life. And then also why, you know, maybe now they think it might be tainted or just not inconclusive, let's say. It still could be there, but inconclusive. So in 2023... James Webb Space Telescope detected potential biosignature elements in the atmosphere of the exoplanet K2-18b, um, 120 light years from Earth. So many exoplanets are extreme, violent, at least alien in nature. This one is very, you know, kind of similar to Earth in ways. So it's two to three times. If you, This is if you don't know about the, the this exoplanet. So it's between two to three times the width of Earth with 8.6 times the mass of Earth. It's also located in the habitable zone of a star. Um, it is theorized to be an ocean, so the entire planet should be an ocean with liquid water. And unlike Earth, the atmosphere of this exoplanet seems to be mainly hydrogen rather than nitrogen. So Earth is mostly nitrogen. This one is mostly hydrogen, which is interesting. The planet gets almost the same amount of solar radiation as Earth. So you can see how scientists would already think this would be such a great um, candidate to, for a planet with life on it. Um, and if atmosphere, it has a temp temperature close to Earth, which is an ideal situation to find life. So they already knew life could be a thing. And then what they did was they found the discovery of carbon dioxide and methane. Um, and then it says these molecules were detected without traces of ammonia, which indicated that this should indeed be a high sea world with a vast ocean um, under hydrogen rich atmosphere. <laughs> Sorry, but there was also the hint of something else. Something very exciting. I like that. Look at this. There you go. An illustration of what K218 could be. That's pretty cool. Great illustration. Thank you, AI. Are we seriously... Are we seriously crediting AI prompters now? What a world. What a world we're living in. That's crazy. Okay, sorry. Um, so the icing on the cake in terms of the search. So what they found was dimethyl sulfide or DMS in the atmosphere on the planet, which is produced on Earth by ocean phytoplankton. Um, so that means if dimethyl sulfide is accumulating to detectable levels, there must be something, possibly life form, producing it at 20 times the rate found on Earth. So that's where they were like, whoa, you know, this, this atmosphere of this planet has the same... Um, dimethyl sulfide that is only produced by ocean plankton on earth so that's why they thought that this could have life but then they realized um down here that the dimethyl sulfide signal from the james webb space telescope was not very strong and it only showed up in certain ways when analyzing the data so we wanted to know if there uh if we could be sure of what seemed like a hint about it um the signal strongly overlaps with methane we think that picking out dimethyl sulfide from methane is beyond this instrument's capability. So um, that means that they're going to have to look again with other instruments other than the near infrared, the uh, N N I R I S S, the near infrared image imager and slitless spectrograph, and the near infrared spectrograph uh, used to conduct the initial investigation. So. They, are, they have another instrument on the, J, the JWST, the MIRI, the mid-infrared instrument. So the other two are near-infrared instruments, and this is mid-infrared instruments. Uh, what that means exactly, a little bit above my pay grade, so we won't go on that. But basically, they're using, they, they still have an opportunity to look again and use a new instrument this time. And then see if they can separate just the regular plain old methane signal from this dimethyl sulfide signal. And if they can do that, um, you know, then that will be a great 
indicator, really, or um, a sign of life. So yeah, uh, why do we keep exploring the cosmos for signs of life? Imagine you're camping in the Joshua tree at night. I don't know why he's being so specific and you hear something. Your instinct is to shine a light. See what's out there. That's what they're doing. So there you go. That was published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. Now that. Now this. That's what I should have read. We could be here all day. Wow. An actual scientific article about everything. Really cool. Um, again. Above my pay grade. <laughs> now that I'm seeing these like chemical formulas. Uh, man. God bless the scientists out there, right? I'm just bringing this to you guys as a layman. You know what I mean? I just enjoy the idea of searching for things in space and looking at them uh, and finding things out about them. So cool. So really cool. And uh, now that I see that this is, I take it back because it sounds like this is the, the researcher. So you know what? I guess we should credit him. Good on him. Um, anyways, what do you guys think about that do you think that there's life on um k2 18b it's pretty i mean it's got all the possible signs like it's got no real red flags other than maybe the mass like maybe the mass of the planet is t is very large so does that have an effect on life i don't know or some other kind of life um out there but the very fact that they ha have this uh, methane signal i mean that's just another you know box tick for possible life the sad thing is it's 120 light years away, so at least in our lifetime, we'll probably never have a chance to uh, see that unless we can invent something with uh, light speed travel. But even then, 120 years, that's kind of, I mean, to me, that's always uh, something to think about is, you know, knowing all of this stuff about space, like even if we knew this, this planet had a civilization, like what would that mean for us? What would that actually mean? Because we could never visit them in reality. But what does it mean to know that life exists, but we could never possibly connect with it? Just a little uh, philosophical moment for you there, guys. Uh, if, if you have any thoughts on that, would love to hear them in the comments. I read all your comments, 100%. Don't always reply, but I read them all the time. Um, and anyways, I think that's it for uh, today's video. So if you... If you like this video and you're new here, uh, hit, the hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, uh, you can like the video, leave a comment, and um, yeah, let's keep looking for life out there.